This is Jared from Commit Quality, and in this video, we're going to break down the requests that we sent in the last video and the responses. Before we get started, to make these requests possible, we have to use HTTP. HTTP is a communication protocol, and you kind of need to know the basics of this to be able to understand APIs. So HTTP and HTTPS, which you can see here, are the same, but the S means secure. So wherever possible, it's always best to use the secure version, because this is going to ensure that you data is encrypted when it's sent. There's two parts to Postman here. We've got this top section, which is all belonging to the request. And then we have this bottom section, which is related to the response. So going over the request then, there's a few different parts. A request will contain an address, a request method, headers, and usually a body. And then you can add things like authorization, which will add into the headers, which we'll cover off in later videos. So going over the request method, we touched on this in the last video. By default, Postman always selects get. We'll cover off a number of the different request methods later in the video series, and we'll go over the differences as well. Then we have the address. So in this case, we have the JSON placeholder at apicode.com, which is the address. And then we have an endpoint associated with that, which is the post endpoint. And when I hit send, that's what we see when we return in all the different uh, user ID and IDs we have with it. Now, like I said, we're going to cover off a lot of these in future videos, like params, authorization, body, pre-request scripts, tests. However, for now, I just want to touch over some of the fundamentals. So headers is another thing that gets added. So if we click on headers here for the request, what we see is Postman has automatically added six and they've actually shown as six hidden. So let's click the six hidden. And you can see when we make in this request, Postman has been smart enough to say, okay, I'm going to add in the user agent and add in all these different header keys that we want. I'll be covering headers off in its own video as well, but it's just worth, worth knowing that Postman has actually generated these for us. And then we have a body. So in this in this case, we don't actually have a body because we don't have it for the get request. However, when we start looking at request methods like post, we'll go over the body in a bit more detail and that's how we can add some more information. Let's go into the response now, which is the bottom half of this. One of the key things is the status code. So of course that's showing us if something has passed or failed. In our case, 200 okay means it's all good and you can hover over it like I'm doing and it'll tell you exactly what it's what it means. It's giving you more information in case you didn't know what the status was. We touched on headers. These are the headers. So the ones added are the ones we added to our request up the top and the ones below are the ones that the server has sent back to us. So Postman has nicely laid out exactly what's been sent back to us in the headers. And maybe one of the more important things you want to look at when you're doing a GET request is things like the body. So in this case, this is stuff we're really interested in. This is the data being returned that we want to retrieve. So when we make a GET request, we are saying, oh, give me some data back. And in this case, it's given us all the different posts that we can have. It's all auto-generated information. This is really what you would be checking when you're making the get request. So it's a bit more information about the request and response in Postman. In future videos, when we start getting into things a bit more detail, you're going to see the value in everything we've added. As always, if you have any questions, please drop a comment below. Thank you for watching.